In this video, we have intense storms that are going to be building and so does the heat as the monsoonal flooding rains continue as well as a coastal low develops and heads towards Florida. Then we'll take a look at the tropics as they look to become really interesting by the end of the month. Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here with another update. <laughs> this is your Thursday update. We got a lot to cover in this overall view and we'll take you through the end of the month into, the, into your July 4th weekend. So let's take a look at the overall setup, setup this morning on the satellite. And this is kind of the big picture for you. So we've got this kind of monsoonal flow that just continues out here, complements of these series of storms that have developed off here into the Pacific. This is currently Celia out here. That's actually bringing some much needed rains for the desert Southwest. Even California got into the action yesterday with a lot of heavy rain, but we have this kind of conveyor belt of moisture that had a lot of uh, flooding rains up here in portions of the Northeast. It's still kind of winding down this morning and then it fishtails on the other side of that, that ridge. And so we've got a pretty good narrow band banding of thunderstorms this morning into portions of New York. That fishtails all the way down into Pennsylvania, into Jersey. At the same time, we have this coastal low that's developing off the southeast coast. That's going to pinwheel across and bring heavier showers into Florida. And we also have this tropical wave that's actually coming off the coast of of the African coast right now, you can see it's pretty severe clear in the Caribbean and much of the Gulf of Mexico. But this tropical wave is going to be heading towards the Caribbean over the coming days and heading there towards the, the end of the month. So, but man, let's take a look at the overall setup on the, the jet stream, kind of give you a big picture of what's happening. You can definitely see we've got dominating ridge of high pressure that's locked and loaded over a good chunk of Texas and much of the Southern Plains here. And into the southeast, we're expecting really hot temperatures well into the hundred. Some of these areas up here actually hit their hottest temperature yesterday in 10 years, folks. So we're in fairly rare territory. Some of these areas that hadn't seen this high temperatures in a 10 year time frame with that coastal low that's off the off the uh, east coast this morning. That's going to pinwheel and fishtail across and eventually impact uh, Florida as the jet stream is lifting well to the north. We've got those monsoonal flow underneath with that low pressure system with Celia out here to the open waters of the Pacific. That's amplifying this monsoon and actually bringing that much needed rain into the desert Southwest and to California. In fact, too much of it yesterday. Here are the lightning strikes that took place in California yesterday. In fact, it was the most lightning strikes they actually seen in five years, folks. 54,329 lightning strikes just yesterday alone with those intense thunderstorms that really bubbled up in the morning hours into the afternoon hours unfortunately there was a fatality with that lightning as well but man it's still winding down in california with that monsoonal flow to continue but man they had a lot of heavier storm activity uh yesterday alone in uh, california but it's all about the heat down here into the south, much of Texas, much of Oklahoma, much of the southeast. I mean, well in almost triple digit temperatures all the way to the coastline here. In fact, you are going to be seeing triple digit temperatures in much of Georgia today, topping out about 105 degrees here. Even Jacksonville, Florida will go over 100 degrees. It's tough to get over 100 degrees in Florida. I mean, it's pretty humid down there, so it's tough at tougher to heat up at the at the actual temperature the heat index goes there all the time but yeah to see triple digits in, in Florida is sort of a rarity up here but but that uh that heat just kind of intensifies and in lifting all the way up here into the Dakotas into Minnesota and that's actually going to be setting the stage for pretty intense storms up there headed into tomorrow ahead of this short wave and this cold front that we're going to be talking about. So, but today we still have that slight risk for severe storms along this kind of a boundary into portions of uh, Kansas here, getting into Nebraska. Some of these could be on the stronger wind gust varieties, some, you know, pocket change hail up, maybe upwards to quarter size hail. These aren't really going to be that intense, uh, just kind of a, a boundary going to be draped across into portions of Kansas into uh, portions of Nebraska today. But man, the main activity is going to be tomorrow because we've got a powerful short wave that's going to be coming out of uh, Montana. It's got a lot of lift associated with it. This is actually ahead of a cold front that we're going to be impacting in a good chunk 
of the of the u.s this uh, this coming week and into this weekend but out ahead of it we've got all that instability going to be into play and there's celia down here into the open waters of the pacific and there's pretty intense instability to work with up here into ports of the dakotas getting into minnesota and i do feel this actually creeps into portions of nebraska getting into your oh you're getting into your later uh afternoon into your early evening time frame in fact the storm prediction center has already highlighted that slight risk for severe storms up here in parts of the dakotas getting into minnesota this actually creeps into nebraska i do feel this this at least slight risk is going to be extended into nebraska and there's actually going to be probably an enhanced risk upgrade with this particular setup this setup looks to be all hazards on the table folks even upwards to hurricane force wind gusts are definitely not out of the question with these powerful thunderstorms going to be taking place on, on coming into the day on Friday up here into the later afternoon going into the early evening time frame so I do feel as we get closer to this event going into tomorrow this will in fact be upgraded to an enhanced risk for severe weather and all three modes are definitely going to be on the table with those damaging winds large hail and yes an isolated tornado threat definitely can't be ruled out and there's our surface low bringing heavier rains into portions of uh, Florida that will actually knock the temperature down <laughs> a little bit so you won't be seeing uh triple digits uh, up there but man look at the satellite picture going into your friday afternoon it thunderstorms just rapidly explode ahead of that short wave so we could be looking at supercell thunderstorms really starting to break out into nebraska getting into south dakota getting into north dakota heading up into canada as well and this will pinwheel across into minnesota as we get deeper into the uh, nighttime hours but there's the setup you can definitely see these little isolated bubblers popping up these little renegade supercell thunderstorms that, that we have to be concerned about all those could be very large hail producers and it's kind of popcorn variety and those isolated discrete cells which makes them pretty intense so, so these are going to be potentially rotating at the same time so yes this is this is about uh, you know seven eight o'clock in the evening on friday friday night and this will pinwheel across and move uh you know kind of uh, northeast and more or less eastward as we get deeper into the uh, overnight hours but then high alert up there because all three modes are going to be on the table as we get into your friday afternoon but overall here's the overall wind gust and like i mentioned these things are going to be really windy ahead of that short wave so in montana you live in wyoming getting into even northern parts of colorado into nebraska getting into south dakota north dakota that will pinwheel across into portions of minnesota even in portions of uh, iowa there far northern parts of iowa could be seeing those 60 70 yes even upwards to 80 mile per hour wind gusts are definitely not out of the question on friday as this pretty intense storm system really rapidly explodes up there so definitely be on high alert as we get deeper into the afternoon hours especially into the early, early evening hours up there but as we transfer into saturday there's the cold front right so back behind that cold front it's pretty severe clear so you've got those big storms on friday but as we go into saturday it's nice <laughs> so you just have to make it through uh friday into the dakotas here into nebraska but out ahead of it there's the monsoonal flow with this low pressure center locked and loaded over new mexico and we could be looking at flooding rains now get flooding rains up into mexico we're talking one inch per hour rainfall rates that's actually intense for the desert southwest those areas can only handle about a half inch of rainfall at a time for, uh, per hour so you get an inch of rain in an hour time span that produces flash flooding up there and has a dangerous situation because the ground is extremely dry from all the drier soils over that area and all the wildfires fortunately this rain is making a massive dent and all the wildfires up there so definitely helping out for them but there's our there's our little low pressure system going to be draped across and heading our coastal low that's going to be impacting florida bringing some rain showers for them as we get into your saturday time frame but out ahead of it we could be looking at some sporadic showers headed into portions of wisconsin getting into michigan here back into illinois into missouri you know out ahead of this cold front that will be drifting and draping across 
diving further southeast as time goes on. And then there's your Sunday setup with these temperature anomalies. I do feel we're going to have a rapid warm up out here into parts of California, off, off the coast, especially into Washington and Oregon. They've been experiencing really cooler, chillier conditions for a while now. But I think those temperatures are going to be rapidly warming up in a big way, especially as we get into this weekend. Some of these temperatures could be upwards to almost 90 degrees up there, and that actually is well above average for them. But there's the cold front, right? I don't need to tell you where it is. There's the cold front draped across right here in portions of Colorado. That's going to be impacting portions of the Texas panhandle. But out ahead of it, you got plenty of triple digit heat, just stacking up those triple digit heats in a good chunk of Texas. Uh, probably another triple digit day in portions of Houston. Then, then you're going to be warming up in the Northeast as well, uh, heading into your Sunday. So you've been experiencing those cooler conditions as well. But out ahead of that uh, cold front, you're going to be warming up out ahead of it. And then you got those cooler conditions coming in on the backside. But there's the surface map on Monday. So there's not much gonna, there's not gonna be much precipitation with this front. I mean, it's just, it, it, with the dominating ridge of high pressure, there's a lot of layers in the atmosphere that are pretty dry. So it's tough to break that down. There's not much lift with this particular setup. I mean, the, the dew points are gonna be a pretty low. And so there's not much. I mean, you're talking sporadic showers, maybe 20% chance of showers in and along, you know, North Texas and to Central Texas where the air is a little bit more moist out here into portions of the Tennessee Valley into the Southeast, that's where we could be looking at a little bit heavier thunderstorm activity as we get into your day on Monday along that cold front. And there's our coastal low into Florida with our monsoonal flow continuing for the desert Southwest. But by Tuesday, here's the relative humidity. I, I kind of put this map on so you can kind of really tell where the, the drier air and more the more moist air. So if the graph at the bottom right hand bottom corner of your screen here, all these areas in your brown shaded area, that's your dry air, right? So there's not much rain to speak of as we get into your Tuesday time frame with those warmer conditions really starting to build up into California and then Nevada here. So all these areas in brown, that's probably where you're going to be seeing pretty dry conditions. But gives you an idea where these green areas, that is where your monsoonal rains are going to continue. And I put this map on because it kind of shows you where the cold front could potentially be by the time we get into Tuesday. So it kind of it's going to be drifting down into Texas, bringing much, you know, I say not cooler conditions. They're all actually called cold front. Oh, but I mean, you're still going to be well into the 90s up here in a good chunk of Texas. So basically just dropping you back to normal conditions. And you really have not been normal as of late. It's been well above average temperatures. But yes, by time Tuesday rolls around, that cold front's going to drift all the way down to the deep south. And we could be looking at some, you know, stronger storm activity potentially heading into portions of Houston. This won't be until Tuesday, but along the coast here into New Orleans, draped across into portions of Georgia and the Carolinas. Or along this cold front, we could be looking at some heavier thunderstorms going to be breaking out on the day on Tuesday. But as we transfer into Wednesday, going towards the end of the month, that cold front, or at least a low pressure center, tries to actually form in the Gulf of Mexico. It remains to be seen if it's actually going to form in any, any type of tropical. But, I mean, these areas are actually fairly dry. So what it's actually going to be doing is it's actually going to be possibly bringing much needed rain, at least on the coastal region by then as of the way it looks. These sea surface temperatures have rapidly exploded over the last seven to 10 days. And it's actually going to be really taking advantage of those kind of soupy warm waters out here just along the coastal region. So it's not going to take much lift because there's going to be a lot of a lot a lot of heat down here and a lot of those warmer warmer uh, temperatures. And as we get into the afternoon time frame, yes, we could be looking at kind of the sea breeze action along the coastal regions and some heavier storm activity. On the bottom right hand corner of the screen, that's an indication of where this tropical wave will finally start to be entering portions of the Caribbean and will start to have impacts uh, by then towards the Caribbean. So the way it looks actually right now, the National Hurricane Center has actually highlighted a 20% chance of this developing over the next five days. So like I said, if we got a long time to track this particular wave, and it's fairly unusual for a wave to really kind of hold its own, but it, it definitely appears it's going to be holding its own all the way from the African coast through the islands and then are actually into the Caribbean. 
as we get into your end of the month and if you look at the overall ensembles right now i mean it's too it's too far out there to look at like individual models right now so we always look at for the uh, the overall broader picture on the ensemble view and there's a conglomerate of ensembles really kind of holding its on on this westward track and kind of holding it together you know going through the islands here on the european eps guidance and heading towards the caribbean potentially bringing heavier rains into portions of the jamaica and to the cayman islands i mean this is the this is heading towards over the next 10 days this kind of creeps into your july 4th weekend this is a lot of times people travel they got a lot of destination events out here you know schools out right now so there could be a lot of people heading down there in the caribbean with cruise lines and everything so you just gonna have to watch this as this actually gets closer so especially towards the end of the month and as we go to the first couple of days of july there a lot of the indications this puts it into the caribbean but the got the, the gfs and of course this is an expansion view over 10 days it, it really has it spreading out so there's still a lot of uncertainty it's just now kind of getting together in fact it just it was just named a, a, a 20 percent chance of a probability over the next five days but if we go beyond that here's the latest european guidance i mean it would almost be fairly rare if this this actually held together so this is the overall 15 at day outlook so obviously once you once you get further out the spread gets a lot more uncertain but there's there is actually some ensemble members that try to push this into the gulf of mexico like i mentioned it would actually be pretty rare for such early on of the season for a wave to make it all the way from the African coast all the way to the United States. It's not unheard of to make it, you know, a deep August and September and October, but it's pretty rare to happen in the first last end of June and the first couple of days of July. That would actually be a rare event. And so you can imagine the ensembles are pretty spread out at this point. I mean, here's the latest at GFS ensemble. So once you pass the islands here, it's just, Kind of in no man's land right now so there's a lot of uncertainty still on the table so we got plenty of plenty of time to watch this but overall for the next 15 days i wanted to kind of highlight your july 4th weekend a lot of people were asking me hey what's the weather going to be like on july 4th it is a kind of a ways out but right now we can kind of see where the ridges are going to be maybe where the troughs are going to be and so here's maybe some of your temperature anomalies as we get into your july 4th holiday yeah, we could be, yeah, that dominating ridge looks to continue to be locked and loaded over a good chunk of the south and the southeast with those well above average temperature anomalies. It appears to be the, the monsoonal rains will continue by then. That'll, that'll have the desert southwest actually below average for them. We'll have drier conditions filtering into portions of uh, Idaho into Montana with those above average temperature anomalies and we could have a boundary here draping across into the northeast again bringing some cooler weather for them and here's your overall temperature i mean precipitation anomalies maybe over the next 15 days to kind of give you an overall hint it definitely appears the monsoonal rains will continue before for the foreseeable future with a good chunk of the four corners regions especially at arizona especially into new mexico getting those well above average rains as much of the ridge of high pressure just really kind of dominates and where it's actually been as of late it looks to continue and it does appear florida and along maybe the east coast has a little bit wetter conditions with these coastal lows these fronts that get draped across the east coast and anything that might be tropical may be heading that way so right now the waves kind of favor heading it towards florida and towards the east coast if there's anything that might be getting near towards the United States over the next 15 days. That's just what it kind of looks like right now. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update, why I protect you before and after the storm.